today we're making a sensory cocoon, so please stick around. Hi friends, my name is Claire and this is my channel, Woodshed Theory. Here, I make content about what it is like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me, so if that sounds good to you, or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button, ring the bell. I have been wanting to do this project for, oh, I don't know, at least two years since I knew that blanket hoodies existed. The first time I ever put on a blanket hoodie, I was spending some time with a friend who had just recently gotten one, and as soon as I put it on, I knew that it was an item meant for neurodiverse people. If you're neurodiverse, you know that sensory issues are a real thing for us. And having a warm cocoon that I can just wrap myself up in and just disappear into, that sounds like heaven. So today I am going to make my own. I'm going to go through the process of making it. I will show you the whole process so that if you want to make one, you can make one too. So I hope you enjoyed this journey because I sure did. Okay, bye. Goodbye. I'm filming this at night because I am feeling antsy to be working on something and I don't want to wait until the lighting is good. So I hope that you don't mind. I went ahead and uh, purchased this pattern from So What Pattern. Patterns made by Hind and Huda on Etsy. I think I paid less than $3 for the pattern, maybe $4. It was on sale. I'm not sure how I feel about the pattern. This is the instructions. The instructions were like, the instructions were maybe 20 pages and the pattern itself was 50 pages or so. So I wasn't super happy about that. Um, I thought maybe they could have figured out something different. Supposedly there are two sizes in here. I did the adult size. It's supposed to look like this, right? So what you do when you uh, print out the pattern is you print out on your size of paper. Mine was an A4. On the pattern itself, there's a size guide in centimeters. So you print out the pattern. You make sure that on that little ruler, one centimeter actually equals one centimeter. Once you've confirmed that it's the right size, you print it off and then you can cut the pattern out, tape it together from there. Something that's really fu funny. Um, obviously, whoever made this pattern, English maybe isn't a first language. They spell the word, I believe they're going for snugly, wrong, uh, several ways all over the pattern, which is fine. I found it amusing. But on this page, as you can see, it says, Sungly all over it, so that's fun. But that doesn't really matter, does it? Just the pattern that's important, not the words. To make this, I found the perfect fabric at Joanne on the clearance rack, last chance rack. It was 70% off the original price. Now to make these, usually you make it with like a piece of fleece and then a piece of like Sherpa-like fabric on the inside. This fabric is a two-in-one, so hopefully that will save me a few steps, but I will show it to you. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry about the light, guys. Let me hold this up and cover it. This is like a white, beautiful, soft cotton fabric. It kind of feels like a sweatshirt fabric. It's got a plaid on it and the colors are actually like a blue, a tan, a bricky red, and a lavender. There's a the close up. And then the back is a tan Sherpa. Lovely. Um, let me show you though, the pattern in the pictures, it goes down to like here, okay? Like that's where the, 
blanket hoodie goes. But then I cut the pattern out and I'm like, I don't, can this be right? Which is why I said, did I measure to make sure it was like the right length? Um, this is how long the pattern piece is for the length. You can't even see it in frame. It's really long. Oh yeah, I definitely made it one too long. Okay, I was wondering why it was all the way to the freaking floor. But I, I see now that I've put two of the pieces on where I should have put it on another one. Anyway, I whatever size they have, I'm going to shorten it to it comes to my knees because that's as long as I really wanted it. I just want to be able to tuck myself into it. On the pattern it says snugly with one G, not two Gs. So we have a, um, a fun mixture of different ways to smell snugly. Oh, and then for some reason on this one, it says it's a Christmas hoodie, but it doesn't say that anywhere else. So those are all fun things. No judgment. I've never put a pattern out before, so no judgment. So what I need to do now is go ahead and lay out the fabric, figure out how I'm going to cut everything. It's, it's a huge piece of fabric. So I just need to figure out how to do that and yeah, after that's done, I guess we'll check back in. Happy next day. Last night, I went through and cut out all of the pieces for my blanket hoodie. My sensory heaven blanket hoodie. <laughs> I'm a little bummed because there wasn't enough fabric to actually do the sleeves and just to do the entire thing in the same fabric. Thank goodness earlier in the year, not earlier in the year, like uh, two months ago, I picked up another Sherpa backed fabric that kind of matches. So we're just going to go with it. So here's the fabric that we're using, right? This is the hood cut out. There are two pieces here. And then the fabric that's going to be the sleeves. And then I cut out, there was enough to do this front panel or front pocket in the other, uh, in the original fabric, but the sleeves and the pocket in the front are going to be in a, it's corduroy, but it's not a thick corduroy. It's a softer corduroy with the Sherpa inside in white. So it is a little bit different, but I don't think you're going to be able to see like the inside of the sleeve or the inside of the pocket when you're wearing it. And it does look, I think it looks nice together. Um, so I think it's going to look okay anyway, but I was a little bit bummed. I thought surely, surely I had enough that huge piece of fabric. And I do ha still have a little bit of it left, but not enough to do the huge sleeves and the hood and the pocket. So I guess what's important is that I have enough of the type of fabric to make it work because it would really suck to not because uh, this, I took the rest of this at the store and I'm not sure where I would get it because it's um, last chance discontinued probably. So what I'm going to be doing now, um, because the pattern actually calls for you to use two different fabrics and then kind of sew them together, kind of sew them together to um, make the pattern. Um, so th there would be like a fleece on the outside and a Sherpa on the inside. Um, because it's just one piece, I'm going to go along and I'm going to serge or overlock the edge of every piece, I think. And that will keep it from uh, shedding and fraying. And the other thing that I was thinking, because originally I was just going to serge the pieces together, but it's very thick. And I'm not sure that my serger is up for the challenge. It's like a 1960s machine. So what I'll do is um, go along with white serging thread and serge all of the edges. And then after that's completed, I can kind of figure out how I'm going to put everything together. So that's where we're at right now. Okay, so I have threaded this machine 
and I took the time to test a bunch to make sure that it's working. I finally got it working <laughs> to where it's uh, working well, and now I'm gonna get started, so wish me luck. friends of the internet welcome back to a real person just to live in it's been about a week since I worked on this project last I left off I had finished getting all of the pieces of the blanket hoodie overlocked so I overlocked every piece of the hoodie Except I didn't do the sleeves yet. No, not the sleeves. The cuffs for the sleeves. But I'm thinking maybe I don't want the cuffs on the sleeves. I'm not sure how I'm going to sew them. So I think I'll tackle that when I get there. But supposedly the next step is to sew it all together. So I have put away the old girl, which is my new name for my 50-year-old overlocker. And I've pulled out the instructions. Yes, the first thing I'm gonna have to do is to prepare the front pocket and the hood. So sew the hood together and sew the uh and sew the hem under and then sew the hems for the pockets. Okay, easy enough. So this is what the pocket looks like now that it's all been sewn inside. Looking pretty cool. I was just thinking to myself, it's going to be so easy to show them how to place the pocket properly because all you do is lay the pattern over the piece and then it shows you where to place it and you can poke holes and use a little chalk and know exactly where it goes. But then I realized I threw that piece of the pattern out because it was such a huge, huge piece of paper. And I thought if I ever make this again, I'll just reprint that piece of paper. Not that I think I'll ever make one of these again because I'll, I'll have one. Uh, so what to do now? Eyeball it and then measure out some things and see if I like the placement is what I'm thinking. Uh, mistakes were made. Okay, that seems like the appropriate spot. So I'll go ahead and top stitch the top and then the bottom and the sides. Then we'll have like a front pocket situation going on. Should be fine. Now we're moving on to sewing the hood together. Um... Or maybe not. Maybe I'll put the... pocket on the front. Because it's the same color thread. Yeah, I'm going to do that instead. Let me get this set up. You know what? That is not that bad. Is it perfect? No, but it's also a blanket for one's body. So that's not bad. But it's like so nice inside. I've got to cut the threads off, but okay. Now onto the hood. Okay. I just finished the hood and I finished putting the pocket on the front. So it's not perfectly lined up, but, and I'm not super happy with how the bobbin stitching is going. So I think I have an issue with tension. So I need to fix that. But other than that, everything is going great. So now that I have done that part I can finally start assembling. So hopefully I can do that in three hours. I feel like I can. Let's try. Let's try. Assembling this shouldn't be that hard actually after reading everything. Basically, 
you put the wrong sides together. I think I will clip this part. Then you sew up the shoulders, sew on the hood, fold it all open, sew in the sleeves, sew the side seams up, and hem it. That's not hard, right? That's not too hard. My spouse just came in and said, and I told him I was gonna get this done for our movie that we're leaving for in three hours. And he was surprised. He said that that seemed like I had the whole thing to do. But I don't feel like it's that much to do. We'll see. All right, wrong sides are together and I'm gonna sew up those shoulder seams. Guys, it's so cool. It's so big. You know what? Maybe I'll just do elastic on the sleeves. I think I have some elastic. That is so smart. Best idea ever. Cool, so now what I need to do is get the hood and sew the hood on. I just did the hard part and put the hood in. But I think it looks okay. Is it perfect? No. But it's a blanket hoodie, so... Um, yeah, so the next thing to do is to pin in the sleeves, sew the sleeves in, then pin the sides up and sew the sides up and then basically it's done. So we just got to figure that out. This is never leaving my body. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna flip it inside out and sew up the sides. This is never leaving my body. All right, we're in the home stretch. It's finished except for the sleeve part, okay? So all I'm gonna do is fold the sleeve under and make a channel. I'm going to stick some elastic in there and there you have it. It'll have like a tighter end. There's no point in doing the, um, the cuffs, the sleeves too long anyway. So <laughs> I'm just going to do elastic. It's going to look fine. Okay. So I've put in one of the elastics and I wanted to show you kind of how it works. So you leave an opening in the channel, you sew the elastic shut. Now I'm going to trim it and then sew the channel shut. So you won't even know that the sewn elastic is in there. I'll sew right over that. You have to stretch it, but that's fine. was so worth it. I, I cannot recommend one of these 
autism sensory cocoons, aka blanket hoodies, enough. I am so warm. I am so cozy. I am never leaving this thing. I'm so impressed with the quality of this and how it came out. I think my sewing skills are improving. So let's really quick go over how much time it took me to make this and the cost of the materials and my thoughts. Uh, as far as time goes, cutting out and taping the pattern took a long time, probably an hour or an hour and a half. I did it over two days because I started getting cutting out and taping together a PDF pattern fatigue. It wasn't necessarily a hard pattern, it was just large. Uh, cutting out the fabric out of the actual pattern, probably around an hour. Then serging every end of the fabric, probably about another hour. That went over two days as well because I was struggling with the old girl, my 50 year old serger. And then sewing and putting everything together, putting the elastic in, that took three to four hours. So in total, we're looking at a total time investment of six and a half to seven and a half hours to make your own. As far as cost of fabric, if you bought this fabric full price at Joanne, it would be not cost effective at all. I bought the plaid fabric on 70% off last chance clearance. And I think I ended up paying for about, oh, how much was it? Three and a half yards, something like that. Three and three quarters of a yard. I think it was about $23. So then it would have been what, two? Okay, about three yards for $23. And then the beautiful corduroy pieces, which I had not planned on using for this. And I just happened to have in my collection from a remnant. Uh, those were, I think the piece was like 0.8 yards and I paid less than $5 for that piece, but they're all, uh, po either polyester. I know this fabric on top here is cotton and then the lining, the Sherpa lining is the polyester. Altogether, if I had bought it flat out the price it was supposed to be, the price on the plaid fabric was about $35 a yard. The price on the corduroy fabric was $40 a yard. And I used probably about four yards of fabric. So that's bananas. Um, buy it on sale. Don't go out and spend $120, $30 on this. So I spent about uh, 28 or so dollars on the fabric. And then on the pattern, uh, it's by a creator called So What Patterns on Etsy. I spent $3.64 and that was down from $7.25, uh, but it's still on sale right now if you wanna go and buy the pattern. The pattern also came with both adult and children sizes. I think they mentioned something like this fitting up to a size 6X, and I can definitely see how that would be the case. It is a very, very accommodating garment for uh, mostly any size could wear this. Also, I think if you needed it to be bigger, it wouldn't be that hard to scale it up because most of the pieces are just squares. So it wouldn't be hard to make the pieces bigger if you needed it. Thoughts on the actual project itself. Uh, the project that, the pattern that I used called for two layers of fabric. I used the special fabric that is the two layers in one. It's already lined in Sherpa. So that did save me some time, but I don't know if it saved cost if I had bought it full price. You might save some money if you did the two layers, but it, it might not be that much. It was one of the hardest fabrics I've ever had to sew through because it was so thick. So I definitely had to up the stitch length, up the tension, or sorry, loosen the tension and just go slow and let the machine work at its own pace because it's like, you know when somebody eats like a huge sandwich and they have to open their mouth all the way? That's what it was like trying to feed this thing into my sewing machine. I absolutely recommend if you have a serger using a serger on all the ends. 
I was going to surge everything together, but I didn't think that my serger could handle that. So I surged all the pieces separately and then sewed it together. In general, was it worth it for me? Well, sensory wise, 110%. However, if you're not a sewer, if you're not getting things on clearance, and if you don't have seven and a half hours, no, this would not be a project for you. It was a passion project for me. I think this is better quality than I've seen with other blankets, uh, hoodie blankets. Um, so there's some really great things about it. I think the pattern is really cool. I think it looks a lot cooler than some of the ones that I've seen, but you could go online and buy something at least similar for 30 or $40, all the way up to $100, $150, depending on what company and the quality, etc. But you can get something similar for maybe a little bit more expensive than the cost of materials that I paid, but also you need a sewing machine, a serger, time, you need to buy the $4 pattern. I would just buy one. Do I recommend you buy one? Heck yes. This is amazing. Where has it been all my life? I can literally just get in this thing, curl into a ball and disappear. It's beautiful. It's soft. It's warm. This is what dreams are made of. <laughs> That's it guys. We made the blanket hoodie, the sensory cocoon. We have done it together. I hope that you enjoyed. Do you have a blanket hoodie? Would you make one? Do you think you'll get one? What do you think of mine? I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.